legislation called law by the BLM was not just. It, it defied logic. When you're going to kill someone over grass or turtles, it defies logic, does it not? Absolutely. And, you know, um, I, I have to agree with you so much, Shane, on that aspect of it. And, and, you know, just to back up a little bit and let everybody know, and they can look this up. All they have to do is type in um, U.S. Code 4. Section 72, it's public offices at the seat of government, and it says all offices attached to the seat of the government shall be exercised in the District of Columbia and not elsewhere, except as otherwise expressly provided by law. So they're not even in the realm of where they have any kind of authority at all. And when, once you have people who have these uniforms, if you will, and, and they are aiming guns at unarmed citizens in order to push their agenda on somebody. They themselves are no longer law enforcement, and BLM's not even law enforcement in the first place, but they then step over. They're just criminals wearing a costume. That's it, with a $60 badge on there. One of the gentlemen on the front line uh, Mr. Love is a Green Beret that was did did a um, interview with I believe it was the Discovery Channel or it was the History Channel of him over in Afghanistan. He's a hired thug, you know. Um, and and how in the world he can sit there and pretend that he's that he's doing this because he's following his oath of office when even in the documentary. He was treating the people over in Afghanistan better than he was treating the American people is disgusting. Wow. Well, you know, also, um, what, what was more insulting is no, the fact that I knew personally that not only myself, but multiple, multiple other law enforcement officers, that's toting, you know, oath of office carrying law enforcement officers were there. Right. Uh, as peacekeepers, as, as, you know, as, as our other guests know, if he's been in law enforcement for 40 years, we're peacekeepers. We're, that's all we're called, you know, peace officers. Right. And so these people were there as peacemakers. <coughs> and as fellow, you know, how do you feel about that? Fellow law enforcement officers virtually well, being gunned down. Yeah. They're, the actions of the BLM, let there be no doubt, disgraced every other law enforcement officer in this country. Their actions were outrageous. Now, I saw the video in which two females were beat up. One was a 57-year-old female, the other one was late 20s, and I believe she was pregnant. Yes, now, you're both right. Of them, both of them ended up on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I believe the pregnant female was also chased. Now, the 57-year-old female, the grandmother, well, she had her boot, had a foot put on her head, keeping her on the ground. Right. And now, this is in addition to the 8 to 10 other people that were catered by uh, BLM federal agents. Now... I watched that video over and over and over, and each time I was, I was just getting sick. Right. Because what I saw, and, uh, and maybe some of you will disagree with me, I saw a lot of finger pointing by the protesters, a lot of loud language, a lot of profanity, but no aggressive physical action toward those BLM officers. Correct. Nothing that would justify their action. Nothing, absolutely nothing even come close. Now, I've been, like I said, I've been in this business for 40 years. And I'm not talking about sitting behind the desk. I mean down in the trenches. I've worked this for 40 years. I have never seen such outrageous action by any type of law enforcement uh, organization in my life. And... I put, I have put this out before. If I was sheriff for the day, none of that would have happened. And if it did even remotely happen, some of those federal agents would have been in my jail. They'd be under arrest for assault. My hat's off to you. Authority. My hat's off to you. Uh, I, I just.
Bruce, and I have to say I wish that you had been sheriff that day. Well, let me ask you this, Gordon. Um, yeah. I do know that you're running for Clark County Sheriff for 2014, and uh, as you well know. That will be my fourth time. Right. That will be my fourth time. I ran in 2002, 2006, 2010, and I'm running again. Now, if, and if, I'm going to keep running until it happens. Good, Amen. good. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, now, if you win that, are you um, willing or, or are you planning on going after uh, Sheriff Gillespie and the other individuals that were involved with this corruption? Because according to Nevada law, the BLM agents and then, of course, Gillespie didn't do his job. And I've got the um, Nevada law codes for you as well if you need them. Uh, that they were guilty of grand larceny as well as he was guilty of not arresting them, which is also in the Nevada um, revised statutes. You know, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And I've read those statutes, and they're, they're pretty explicit about uh, wrestling cattle. Yes. And it has uh, the, the grand larceny statute you're talking about has to do directly with the, uh, with the wrestling of cattle. Yes. And it doesn't delineate uh, on who is allowed to and who isn't allowed to wrestle cattle. Right. And you're, you're, you're absolutely right. If I could, uh, in addition to the conspiracy charge uh, for the death of Officer Kevin Daly and various other crimes that have been committed under this police administration, this present one and the past one, Oh, there's a multitude of felony crimes that I'm going to rectify when I am sheriff. I can't do it right now. Right. It just, it, I can't, my hands are tied right now. The FBI is investigating these people. Good. They are, as we speak, but they're slower than molasses. I hope I'm still vertical and above ground by the time they finish their investigation. And what I've done is I've given them a little boost. Every two weeks, there's a uh, FBI uh, tip line that you can uh, kind of write in on the internet. Right. And I uh, I write them and just kind of remind them about the importance of uh, like a, a timely investigation. Now they've had this since June of 2013, mm -hmm. and the FBI only works one way. They they accept information, but they don't give it out very often. Right. In fact, is I don't like I can't remember when they've ever given it out until it's indictment time. Right. Well, with they with their their failure in moving uh, properly and uh, and directly with regards to these crimes is that more people are being victimized. Right. The the victimization continues because nothing is apparently there. Now, if you were to look. Uh, what happened in 2013, this is how the FBI essentially works. They, they work behind the scenes. They, they, they can't just come on in and take everybody's head off because uh, they'll destroy the entire infrastructure of local government if they do that. Right. But they do it nice and slow, nice and slow and subtle. Mm -hmm. Now, three assistant sheriffs retired in 2013. Okay. The sheriff changed his mind because he was all hot to trot to be, uh, uh, go for a third term. Uh, and then all of a sudden, in one week's time, he changed his mind about that. Now he's not going to run. Hmm. Then you have two captains that all of a sudden retired. Now, nobody's given any, any particular reasons why they're not, they're retiring. There's no reason for them to. There was, it's right in the middle of the uh, term. What's right. the hurry? Okay. I would like to think, and I, I hope and pray, that my little federal lawsuit that I filed in January of 2011, and then the legal depositions that came out, which uh, depicted four unsolved murders, whereby this present administration is complicit, may have had something to do with those retirements. Right. And it may have had something 
to do with the present sheriff changing his mind about running for a third term. Well, we now, can hope so. <laughs> you know, I can only hope that it did. But that still doesn't negate the criminal offenses that they are complicit in. Right. So, yeah, to answer your question, when I am sheriff in, in November, and that's when the general election is, <clears throat> when I am sheriff, you can bet your boots that there's going to be some uh, indictments coming down that will be coming from the police department. It won't be, uh, I'm hoping that the feds would probably uh, jump in on board, but they will definitely will come from the police department. So, well, that's, there you have it. I, I'm very glad to hear that. And um, uh, back to you, Shane, for a minute. I know that you're aware of the homeless man that was was killed um, a couple of months ago in Albuquerque. Um, and I don't know if you've heard about the newest, but there was a 19-year-old woman killed by the same... Um, I don't know all of the details, but came killed by the same Albuquerque police shoot um, and, and killed a 19-year-old woman uh, just um, a couple of days ago or yesterday, as a matter of fact, and she was unarmed. Do you, uh, both of you gentlemen being in law enforcement, do you think that it is going to, and I really hope it's not, this is one of the things that I really work really hard to do is, is to get the American people to understand there is a difference between a corrupt police officer and your, you have great police officers. But the problem is that there are so many that's corrupt today, it's getting to the point where anybody who sees a uniform and a badge automatically in their mind associates that with bad guy. Do you think there is going to come a point where the good police officers are literally going to have to take off their uniforms in order for the people not to think that they're the bad guys? Or do you think we can turn this around? Well, you know, I would think that, uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I, I tell you, uh, the good police officers, the ones that, uh, you know, uh, that have been in the business for a long time, we see what they're hiring. We see what they're allowing to enter into the police force. Right. And it is, taken over, it is being taken over by organized crime, believe me. Yes, absolutely. The, the, uh, the standards in which uh, the police are uh, being accepted are so lowered, at least in, in, the, uh, in Nevada, and at least with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, uh, it's, it's no wonder that uh, officers are acting out things that they shouldn't be acting out. And they're, they're operating uh, outside the law mm -hmm. because they have been told and they have been shown that their actions now will be condoned by right. the police administration. Right. The police administration is allowing officers, younger officers, to to make those mistakes and are failing to discipline them properly because they're buying their loyalty. Mm -hmm. They're buying their silence. Right. So they figure, okay, if an officer does something wrong and he is not held accountable, and they cover it up, the, the administration covers it up, they now own that officer. That officer will do whatever the administration wants them to do because they own them now because that officer has sold his soul. And the only one time you need to do is to sell your soul one time and they own you. Well, what are they hiring? They're hiring drones. They're hiring drug users and they're forgiving them for their drug use. Right. Okay. In my day and age, when I was hired in 1974, you couldn't even have walked by a residence that was using dope. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, they ask you, well, uh, we understand you've used drugs recreationally, uh, 